introducing myself, how I end up here on TikTok, and what I love, what my passion is. Just a little bit. I won't get into the deep, deep details, but I will say I am um, a baby girl of my father, and I have four other siblings. Um, I grew up in church. Did I let him stop saying, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. I grew up in church, a church girl, loving God and, you know, wanting not to be a sinner, so to speak. My mom kept me in church, and I was so, I played so many roles in church till I, being introverted, I decided that when I grew up that I didn't want to be like the church people that I saw because I saw a lot of, you know, being a treasurer, being a pastor's assistant, being an usher, being a camera girl, and being in the choir, I saw and heard the adults doing some things that I, I kind of questioned a lot. And so I made it a point to say, you know, as especially as the usher, the people that constantly would come up there to, you know, seek healing and everything, that I didn't want to be like that. It, it seemed like they were on rinse and repeat, and I, and I wanted to figure out what it is. So I used to... My mom was really overprotective. She's a minister still. And I used to um, just like couldn't go anywhere. You know, <laughs> we all, it was always something for church or school. So I was always in my room or home. And um, when I was home, I used to read the Bible a lot in my closet. I was either reading, reading the Bible in my room, cleaning my room, or crying in my room for my dad. Because my mom and my dad divorced when I was five years old. And so I would cry out for him because it was a moment where he would come every weekend. And then as we grew up older, the weekend visits became, you know, far and in between until they like, you know, faded out completely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot in church. Yeah. I used to preach. Now I just speak free to religion. Oh, religion is bondage. I believe that to my 20s in Pastor Church. It was rough. Yeah. Yeah. And so what happens is. When you, when I got out of my mother's house from underneath her roof, I decided that I want to explore spirituality, myself, and everything, the total opposite of everything that I ever learned. So, you know, when I was younger, my daddy stopped coming and I stopped crying for him and I started crying out for what I called at that time Jesus. I didn't know it to be my higher self just yet. And so I would actually sit in the closet and I would write letters to what I call Jesus. I would write letters to Jesus. I would talk to Jesus. And I would hear, actually, I would hear voices answering me. I told my parents and stuff about it, not understanding anything about my inner self, my inner being, my habitual thinking. They looked at that and perceived it to be like an imaginary friend, so to speak, or the devil, so to speak, because, you know, it was like a spirit. And I was told not to talk to this, this, you know, this self, this inner being. But it would still kind of like guide me as a child. It was still like <laughs> home to me. I mean, and I questioned, you said you're so free. I sure did. And I questioned why all of the adults didn't want to talk me to talk to this energy because it never told me anything wrong. Like if I was, if it was getting dark, it would tell me like, go home. I would be woke up in the middle of the night and I would see things happening before they happen. And just, it was really cool, deep, interesting things. But I was, you know, told, don't go down that route. You know, it's Jesus, you know, or hell and devil, like, right? And so you just, you pick the road. and But you, you if since you're underneath this roof, you got to do this religious route. Anyway, um... I was kind of sad and I was really introverted but yet inquisitive when I was younger. I was sad that my daddy wasn't there because that was supposed to be at that time what I thought was supposed to be my first love. And um, I would be an overachiever sometimes in school. I made straight A's. I would be, um, when I realized the straight A's didn't work, I would try to fail. You know, I try to skip school and get in trouble. Like, right? Just to get the attention of my father to come back home. Like, right? So I had some trauma issues that I didn't realize that I was developing and in, in, in the hate and resentment for him not coming on weekends um, begin to grow inside of me. And we lived like three houses down from the corner. 
where the stop sign was where my daddy, if he was coming for the weekend, he would have to stop at that stop sign before he got to my house, our house rather. And so we had bars on the window and I would stick my head between the bars, the crack of the bars to make sure I'm looking at the corner because I wanted to jump sword to tell my other siblings that daddy was outside, that daddy's here because I was so excited about daddy coming and daddy never, never showed up after a while, you know, the visit stopped. And when they stopped, I put up this wall, this shield around my heart, you know, and he, it was almost like I was pretty much saying, I ain't loving nobody, nobody getting up in here, you know, and oftentimes we think we're shielding other people from getting in when we be shielding ourselves from getting out. And so I was really holding on um, to my heart and not allowing myself to love and express love and, and find joy in anything. And so if you know anything about chakra pools of energy or energy in yourself, if you're not exuding energy, your energy portals of life are being clogged up. And so that's what was happening to me. My heart, the largest chakra pool of energy that has enough frequency to open up all other chakra pools of energy. There was It was just you know, stagnated because I was choosing to hate. I was choosing to not love. I was choosing to suck my feelings and I was choosing to act like I was okay. And so with that choice came sickness and disease. And if you're listening now, maybe, you know, everybody has a different place in their life, but all sickness and disease start in the spiritual realm from us choosing hate and envy and, you know, not to love it once again. And so I understand this now, but I just didn't understand it back then. So me coming up in church and now here I am at that moment, I'm, I'm a teenager now, now holding on to hate because daddy wasn't there and been gone for so long. <laughs> I started to kind of like question church or religion even the more because I had been a good girl in my mind. So how is it that I have now the sickness and disease that I saw all of these other members of the church constantly come up for prayer about what do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean, God? It is my turn to suffer. I don't want to go through this long suffering, you know? And so at this time, now I'm inquisitive about spirituality. I'm inquisitive about everything that they told me not to be inquisitive about in church now because I wanted to get to know myself. I wanted to run so far. Hey, Trey. I wanted to run so far. I'm perfect, babe. So far from religion as possible. And it really was like I was running into my calling, you know? I was running into my call. It was all perfectly orchestrated. But in running away from religion, you know, I was trying to study spirituality. And my it was like the way was open for me to get the information, to get the knowledge. And after I graduated the second time from college, I had this yearning of information. You know, school was over, you know, doing all the papers and stuff was over. But my it was like my mind was just wide open for knowledge. You know, it was like my crown chakra now, in hindsight, I understand my crown chakra <laughs> was open. My first eye was open. But here's the thing, my heart wasn't just yet. My heart wasn't just yet, so I'm getting all this information and I'm learning all this spiritual knowledge and, and the mom, my mom and my family, they're looking at me like I'm this um, backsider, you know, because I'm not going to church no more because now, now I'm, I'm over. You know, I'm like 17 and I'm out of my mom's house already because I just wanted to be free from from her um, kind of like idea of what religion and what my life had to be. And so here I am. I have my own place. You know, I left the house. I'm exploring spirituality, mindfulness, but I'm still I'm feeling sickness and disease because I was holding on. Hey babe, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. I was holding on. Love your hair. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks for noticing. So I was holding on to this here pain from daddy not being there in my life. And being that I am holding on to this here, I would I would constantly like avoid my cycle. I would have these horrible cycles. Oh my god, like I would have to stay home from school. Almost risk failing school in high school because I would be taking you know that they used to only give like 14 days I believe it was i will be taking so much time because I was cramping like right I was in the cold I mean throwing up cramp can't move cramp can't eat cramp the common cold I had I had bad acne I um what else I had I had irritable bowel syndrome I would get vertigo sometimes I used to wear glasses 
Um, what else? I think that was about it. But that was enough, you know? So all of these sicknesses and disease and disharmony within myself was stemming from the fact that I, now in hindsight, understand that I wasn't effectively speaking my truth. My chakra pools of energy weren't in alignment. I was out of alignment with myself. And it wasn't until I forgave my father and picked up the phone to call my father one day just because I just was tired of holding on to how I felt inside. I called him on the phone and I and he was like, who is this? And I told him my name and he was like, oh wow, because he knew, he knew I was holding on. I was holding on to like, where were you kind of energy. Every time he would come around, you know, I'd just be like, kind of like, yeah, look at that, blah, blah. And so I called him, he's like, who's this? And I told him my name, he's like, what's going on? Everybody all right? What's going on? Something wrong with you? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> because I wasn't calling no more. I wasn't going over the sea no more. Matter of fact, I had got, I had purchased my own car. I had purchased my own car, and I went to go see him one day. And on the ride there, I realized, dang, I thought it was far. I just purchased my first car, and it only took me a couple of minutes to get to his house. Like, it only took me maybe about three or four minutes to get to his house. I thought he lived so far in my mind because prior to getting in my car, I used to just walk to places and catch the buses to places. But when I got the car and realized he li lived maybe four minutes away, I'm like, dang, and he didn't come to see me. So that ain't not even added to the already resentment that I already had in my mind, in my heart, right? Anyway, nonetheless, I called him one day and I said, no, nothing is wrong. Everything is right. Everything is perfect. How are you? And he said how he was and all. And I said, hey, listen, I, I really don't want to be here long. I just want to tell you one thing. I just want to get one thing off my chest. It would have felt good to know your favorite color. It would have felt good to be able to hold your hand in kindergarten. It would have felt amazing for you to walk me down the aisle when I got married. If you would have attended my graduation from high school. <laughs> if you would have been there <laughs> for my um, graduation from both of the universities I graduated from. Because I feel like I did a lot of those things. And I worked and I, I, I kept my GP up, GPA up to get your attention. It was almost like I was sending a signal to you. But here we are today, and I just want you to know that I forgive you, and I love you, simply because you are my father. And he was like, wow, okay, okay, I love you too, and I always knew that you, you was going to be the one to make me proud, is what he said, right? And I was like, okay, all right, that's all I wanted to say. And I get off the phone with him, and it was like the barbed wire fence came from around my heart. From that moment on, sickness and disease did not visit me anymore. I learned about health and wellness, and I became so passionate about health and wellness for the simple fact that all of the people in the church, they were constantly getting that holy, that healing and deliverance line, and they would always be rinsed and repeat with their health issues. I And I, one day, had gotten to the place where I wanted to understand why I was getting the health issues, you know, my irritable bowel syndrome, why I had the red glasses, and why my stomach and cramps were so bad and stuff, right? So... I became really, really passionate about health and wellness, and I still am. There's nothing wrong in the physical with me. It's just this stuff lights me up because I know so many people that can use this um, information. And I learned so much about myself in this journey of information, of unfoldment for myself with health and wellness that I love to get here on here and share with other people. I love being in a position to help other people. And I really feel like my audience is those type of same like-minded people that maybe stem from, from religion. But yet, when we stem from religion, which is a beautiful thing, because I feel like that is that, that, that's, that's the beginning, like we're babes in Christ, so to speak, in our journey. And it's a beautiful beginning, but I feel like a lot of us in religion, we end up getting inside of a box, a limited mindset of thinking. That we put so many limits on ourselves that we can't. We can't fall in love with ourselves to the, to the capacity that we need to fall in love with ourselves, being that the kingdom of God is within ourselves. And so I'm really passionate about touching the lives of those said people because they remind me of me. They remind me of the little girl version of me that was trying to walk this little straight and narrow path and was trying to do everything to be in alignment with, with God or to go to heaven, so to speak. But along my journey, I realized that heaven is a mindset. And a lot of us... We are in hell simply because we have a helmet on our head and we refuse to take it off. 
We refuse to take it off and, and, and care about the way that we feel. We refuse to take it off by the trauma that we've been through and not healing from that trauma. We just want to talk and we just want to be in the face of everything. We, 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 we want to present ourselves as if we are healed. We want to present ourselves as if we was this with this perfect person and with such a great overachiever and in 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 that we you know we just we just so righteous, holier than thou, so to speak. When at the end of the day we all get to get to a low frequency, just like the sun shines every day, it's never gonna be the same temperature because we are energy, frequency, and vibration. So our mood, our frequency, our our temperature, so to speak, we go through phases. We go through cycles just like the moon. Sorry about that. We go through cycles and all just like the moon and all. And so my my purpose here, my utmost purpose here, first of all, is me. Because how I feel matters. And it feels just so good to be talking to my reflections about who they are, who I am. Because I feel like everybody that I, I come in contact with on this platform is me. Whether they're a higher version of me or younger version of me, it's just different versions of me on the same journey trying to get to the same place. And so what I offer you all here on this platform is I offer my heart because I speak from my heart. Hey, free spirit, I speak from my heart from the things that I've been through. What I offer is my knowledge here on this platform from all of the herbs and in. <laughs> and the detox and the exotic fruits and vegetables that I've been consumed, that I've done research on being an herbalist and, and cleansing my body. I offer that as far as health is concerned. I offer mental stimulation because I already have my first, some people call it their third eye, but I already have my first eye open and I know <laughs> that, that we are eternal beings that our soul will live on, that from the spiritual side of ourselves, we are energy, frequency, and vibration, and we've been doing this thing over and over and over again. And during my journey, I've been able to enter in different realms. And when I say different realms, really, I'm talking about going down a portal within the subconscious mind, where really the seat of the soul in your Akashic records, if you're from religion, you'll know this as the Lamb Book of Life, so to speak, that they speak of in Revelations, where all of our lifetimes exist. And, and the coolest thing about this journey that I've realized is that we're all God in physical form. But even cooler than that is that we'll never get this thing called life wrong. Because each, each lifetime, when we know what we want, we also know what we don't want. And by releasing the resistance of the things that we don't want, then one lifetime we're able to achieve that. And so I feel like we need not wait to the next lifetime, to the next cycle, that through mindfulness, through meditation, through practices of self, a knowledge of self, that we all can be, do, or have anything that we put our mind to. And so in manifesting, I manifested early retirement for my life. <laughs> So, and I also manifested a move from Louisiana to Arizona where I reside now. So being that I'm retired now, I have more time to do things like lives, to post back-to-back -back videos and things. But at the same time, I'm still that healed. I'm now this healed version of this introvert that I like to take time from myself and be with myself and sit with myself. Because the interesting thing now that I can understand the retirement life Oh, thank you. Thank you. So do I. You do. It's a beautiful thing. Because now that I understand retirement life, I understand that you really should practice before retirement mindfulness. And I'm glad that I did. Because now I'm even more with my thoughts. Now I'm even more sitting with myself. Because if I choose not to, like, because I have a business, yeah, I make products, you know, organic products and detoxes and lotions and soaps and hair products that make your hair grow and all of these beautiful things <sighs> but if i choose to i can put my my business on hold for like if i if i'm if i make a bunch of orders today i can say well i'm gonna fill my orders tomorrow if i choose to so i could clear up my day is what i'm saying and if my day is clear i am in a place where i ain't gotta go to nobody job but I'm alone with my thoughts. And it, it could be a beautiful thing being alone with your thoughts, but that could be the very thing that a lot of retirees being alone with their thoughts make their retirement life 
go down really, really fast. Because it is that at that moment in your life, you wonder, okay, well, what's next? You know, because, you know, most often than not, people's job became their purpose, their reason. They milked themselves so much and they hid themselves so much. Or if they didn't even hide themselves so much, the job takes so much of your time. So by the time you finish with your 40 hours a week, whatever, good, I'm so happy for you. I can't wait till you try them. Keep me posted and don't forget to leave an honest review. And so that after you finish with your 80 hours, you're tired, you know, you, you, you tired, you probably have family and everything else. But when you take that out of the equation, when you're no longer working and now your time is yours, then who are you? You know, now you got to kind of like find yourself. And I'm so happy that when I worked, I was fine. I had already found myself pretty much. Not only did I find myself, but I found my passion during those times. Not only did I find my passion, but I found mindfulness. That way now, when things are on my mind and when I'm in deep thought about things that or people maybe that I'm attached to, I know in order to get out of this place, I have to separate myself to those to, from those things and center myself back with mindfulness because all is mine. So the different in that retiree that goes on and lives a healthy life and a prosperous life and, and, and have fun and, and, and escape sickness and disease and all these different things is the practice of mindfulness. And so it doesn't necessarily limit you to the retiree. It limits, it, it, it expands to that person who's looking for a job, that person who's trying to find themselves spiritually, that person who's getting to know that self, themselves, that person who may have just been told that they have cancer from their doctor all of this, no matter where you are in your journey, mindfulness can bring you out of those situations and make those situations be like a walk in the park. Because truly, I now know that we are supposed to be experiencing heaven or finding our heaven well, right here on earth. Like the, we, we are God's manipulating the energy and drawing heaven to us, thought by thought by thought habitual thinking my habitual thinking and so i'm happy with my journey i'm happy with hey glow goddess i'm happy with hey how you doing thank you for being here i'm happy i got hey goddess 11 for being here on this platform and I, honestly my name is called goddess just be because i came here on this platform after deleting facebook <laughs> and um and my children were telling me, oh, don't do that. I had like 90,000 people over there on Facebook. And I deleted it because I was like, you know what? I, I really don't want to be in the front. I'm the introvert. I want to just I want to just be. And so I deleted that and I walked away from Facebook. And I came here and I just had a little white face. Thank you for the likes, babe. I appreciate you. I came here and I just had a little, you know, mug, the little regular little avatar mug face that's white and gray. I had my picture and nothing. I was just supporting people. And I guess that was a season for me just not talking or whatever. But I came and I opened up my mouth and I just, in my passion, you know, when you get to a place where you know yourself, you have this passion where even if you're an introvert, you just light up when you're helping other people with your passion. You just light up. That's just your, like your little hobby, like thing to do. And that's the way that you are exuding your love. So it, whether you follow me here or you follow me on God is just be healthy. It's just me showing my love. It's just me, it's me expressing myself to my reflections and even some of my reflections that are still dealing with trauma. Some of my reflections that that still probably butt hurt from their daddy issues. I like to talk to them, and you know it could come off as if I'm I'm, I'm maybe triggering those people sometimes because. <laughs> Because my delivery, I, I choose a delivery that's going to get a person's attention, especially if they have trauma. And in getting their attention, the way you know they have trauma is, first of all, you're going to get pissed off from it. Because, see, life happens through us. And so the only way you get, get pissed off by something that somebody says <laughs> is if it applies to you some kind of way. If it don't apply to you, like if somebody said you're ugly and you don't feel that, you'd be like, and in your mind, you're like, mm, that's what you think. I think I'm beautiful. 
But if deep down inside you kind of think you ugly, you know it's too big or your head wopsided or whatever, then you're going to be like, well, look at you. <laughs> Who the hell you think you talking to? Da, 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 da. You're going to try to comment and respond and engage. Sometimes, you know, when you, when you, <laughs> you have this in you, you become triggered. But I understand that that's how I learned some of the things that I, I know. By being triggered, in, in, in it's almost like somebody touched that part of me that I thought was healed. And when I realized by getting upset with that person and I, you know, thought later, man, that thing must be in me. And so I, you can then look back at that reflection that triggered you and see how they was like a catalyst in your life for growth. You can see how they too was purposeful in your journey. Those people that hurt you, that left you, that called you out, that, that, that showed you a part of you because they're all your reflection. And so that's what I like to do on this here page with mindfulness. Kind of like show you some things that I've been through, some things that may have triggered me, not to trigger you for the negative, but I know that it is necessary for growth. Because if you look at it, the totality of God is both good and evil. Sometimes when we come from religion, we want to be just be like, oh, God is heaven. God is love. God is peace. God is mercy. God is grace. God will say the good words because nice matters. But there's another side of that same in the end of that spectrum, which you might call the so-called devil. And a lot of people don't want to embrace that side. Oh, that's the devil. The devil made me do it. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus. And devil, go away. I cast you out. I No, but here with this uh, law of polarity where all things are two-sided and everything is duality, you got to learn how to embrace that part of you too. Because you represent this duality too. You represent that yin-yang energy too that I'm talking about. You reckon, represent this darkness too. So if you're going to be light, you got some darkness in you too. But the thing about it is you just, we, not you, because me too, we collectively just need to learn how to see while in the darkness. And when we learn how to see while in the darkness, that means loving that part of ourselves that we know is dark, that we know is chaotic. Loving it because love heals all. And love, by, he, by that love healing all, love can make you come together as one <laughs> and remember. And so this remembrance is you remembering that you are God in human form. You remembering that how you feel matter. You remember even in a conscious level of a state of being by knowing that life is happening to you. So you collectively remembering. And this is what they were always talking about in the biblical text about the bride and the groom. You joining together with you. You know about the yin and the yang. About God being the author and the finisher. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. It was always about you remembering that you are God. And so that's your physical side of you and your spiritual side of you. It has to remember that it is God. And so that's what I have learned on my journey. And so that's what I come forth to bring. I ain't come, you know, I, I don't really come to do the hip thrusting. I don't really come to like make you, I mean, I, I have a silly sense of humor too, but I don't really come like just to put up videos that's just going to be the silly person. You know, a lot of times when those type of videos on my page go viral when I'm being silly, I, I ended up, I don't care how many millions of people have even seen it. I end up taking that down because I don't want to be remembered for that person that just made you laugh. Your laughter and joy is really, really cool. But I want to be taken to the serious level of, wait, hold up, let me listen to what this here lady got to say. Because I know she's going to say something that's going to edify the church. I know she's going to say something that's going to help me along my journey. And not just my physical journey, but my journey, my soul essence. Because she understands the larger part of me lives on and on and on. That in, in this here, in this here matrix, this here so-called earthly plane that we're on. 
it is like the lowest level. And so we, it's almost like we're learning how to ride a bike with training wheels. And then at this point, we got to learn mindfulness. We got to learn how the ability to focus and have a, a controlled imagination, how it can lead us down different portals. We got to learn how to use our own inner being, our inner own, our own inner habitual thinking, our mindfulness, our dimethyltryptamine, our own serotonin, our own feel-good hormones to quantum jump to other states of being. But we got to learn that here. And in this realm, that learning, that knowledge is used and even, even, even almost like polished on other levels. Because when you, once you learn this on this level, you carry this with you in other realms. Whether it is you call this other realm another dimension, whether you call this um, in your subconscious mind, whether you call this your dream state of being, quantum jumping, lucid dreaming, whatever you may call it, the, 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 the death experience, whatever you may call it, you still gonna live on, you still gonna have mind. So I like to teach little things that help you to manipulate the energy of your mind to get you in the state of being that equates to having or experiencing heaven right here on earth. Whew. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> greetings, little goddess. Greetings, greetings. Thank you for the likes and all the gifts. Hey, Aaliyah. Thank you for being here, beautiful lady. Hey, you love first. Blessings, sweeties. So that's a little bit about me. So I just wanted to do an introduction. I, I've never done that before, but I wanted to talk a little bit about me and say who I am. I got a couple of um, videos that I'm gonna be posting today and I'm trying on purpose to come live a little bit more so I can have, and feel free if you ever wanna join my live and chat. Um, use love first, we still gotta play that game too. Something happened the other night where I got sidetracked and then I ended up going to bed. But feel free if you ever want to join my live and, you know, if you ever want to talk about mindfulness, I open consultations and I love that so much. I love doing consultations with others because that keeps me in a position with being able to help other people. That's available on my website. The link is in my um, bio. I appreciate you too, Glow Goddess. But if you all ever have questions, my email is available on my website. I always respond to my emails and messages in a timely manner, you know, if I'm available, if I'm not doing products for that whole day and probably wiped out. But about 24 hours, I normally be my turnaround on responding to my messages. Yes, ma'am, we sure will. Yeah, if you go live tonight, um, use love first. I'll try to check it out. I know you're a night owl. <laughs> if I'm still up. Because I've been ripping and running and um, uh, taking care of a lot of business today if I'm still... Uh, hey, David, guys. Where is your herbal store? Well, I don't have an actual storefront. I sell my products from my actual residential location. I work from home. Let's tap the screen. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But I'm planning um, to do some retreats out in Sedona. I'm planning for that real soon. So... I'll keep y'all posted on that. I want to do mindfulness um, retreats since I finally got comfortable in this new state that I'm in out in Sedona where we do like vegan food. We do the um, the bowl singing. We do meditation where we go hiking and, you know, just be, be one with nature. And maybe we can have some entertainment, other speakers there. That's really my ultimate goal. One of the big goals of why I really wanted to be here because of the energy and the frequency here. And I wanted to be around like-minded people like myself. So maybe one day in the, fall, in the near future, uh, I will probably won't be doing products forever because that's really my, the big goal for me, just to be able to be in a position to help people energetically with their lives and travel more doing retreats around the world because like I said I'm retired and I don't want to be attached to any house per se I have a house out here but I don't want to have any attachments no more I don't want to be attached to a certain job a certain house a certain anything I finally have been set free like someone else said oh thank you I appreciate that David hey Sammy I'll send you an invite okay that's perfect I appreciate that I finally got to a place where I don't have those attachments, you know. I finally am free. 
you know, once you, you finally get free in a spiritual realm, you don't want nothing. You know, like, we, like for example, when you're free from religion, it's like, nah, I, I don't want to come to that kind of church because it's different from that. All of them the same. I, I'm nope. I don't want to get bound to anything. You know, I ain't joining your church. I'll, I'll, I'll hear your word, but I ain't coming in and being your member, so to speak, because you finally get free. And this freedom I'm talking about, that comes into play even with, with relationships, so to speak. Even with the so-called family that you once knew, so to speak. When it comes with like attachment, per se, attachment of the idea of having anything forever, I don't feel anymore that that is part of the life that I want to live. Because I look at love like this here. You know, some of us look at love like it's this here. Ball and chain, you gotta love me, I gotta live here. I work here and this is my job and this and that and the third. Everything is about this here. I'm connected and I'm attached to this here. But if you think about everything that we're attached to, sometimes we're attached to things and we want to be free from them. I mean, there's sometimes in a marriage or relationship where you want to be free from it. There's sometimes in a job where you, you go in there, you, you want to really be free from it. You don't want to go. You don't want to just be on vacation. You want to just go, go. And so... I understand that energetically attachment is like this here but real love unconditional love and free flowing love is like this here it's like okay you could come freely and you could leave freely and so that's how I am in my life as far as my living is concerned right now I'm not trying to get attached to no Arizona I'm not trying to get attached to no state of being no more I just want to be free flowing with my energy and be able to bless people no matter where I am, what, no matter what state I'm in, just as long as I'm in the right state of mind. Because that's all that matters. Because I live mostly in here. We all live mostly in here. Out here is what, what we believe to be projected, but it all comes projected based upon what we got in here. This here is yielding us this here from our subconscious mind, so to speak. So... That's it in a nutshell. That's me. That's my intro. And I'm so happy each and every last one of you are here. I really appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. The comments, the like-minded energy, the place that I can go sometimes and just vent on a video from something maybe that's going on in my physical reality. Let me go talk to some like-minded people because really and truly I also feel like your family, your real family, so to speak, are the ones that vibrated on your frequency. The ones that you have common commonalities with like right so yeah they i have blood family i love them there's no there's no you know discord or anything you know nothing no ill feelings toward nobody that i'm blood related with but even in the biblical text i feel like this is what the parable was saying when when jesus was saying in so many words take here here is your mother here is your brother he that doeth the will of the father it's your family in so many words and so that's in the and so when you, we thinking about the will of the father the, i i'm thinking about that like-minded energy i'm thinking about the one that's this on a journey for um evolving and so when you meet those like-minded energies that's your family that's your tribe so to speak and so i have that here you know i have some of that in my physical reality too but i have most most often than not the people that be up in th that room they own that journey. The people that's on the, the outskirts that probably ain't tapped the screen to come in the room, they got one eye open to be on that same like-minded journey. But the thing about the journey is broad, is that path that leads to destruction and many will find it because they're not ready yet. Everybody have a season to it. And then there's a narrow path that leads to um, eternal life. And there's few, look, look, there's few that few will go because just take work, just take being accountable for your energy. This take you getting back on the throne of God and remembering who you are. This takes mindfulness. This takes thought by thought by thought, creating your reality to your habitual thought. This takes practice. This takes having a controlled imagination and ability to focus. And ain't everybody there just yet. But it feels so good to me to be able to talk to those people who may be there already maybe on their way there trying you know or there and just just sitting there and just watching you know it really doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it just feels good to be around those type of people yeah it's z yolo <laughs> yep 
It is a beautiful feeling. So anyway, that's it. That's my intro for today. I got some um packages that just came in, so I'm about to go post a couple of more little videos from my Amazon shipping on my other page. Because I wanted to share all the little cool little um, herbs and stuff that I just got in. So y'all stay tuned to my videos. And if you ever want me to join your life, connect with me, whatever, send me a DM, email. I'll be happy because I'm really trying to, you know, meet people here and network. I don't know what my, my what I know as far as imagination is concerned, what I'm manifesting is concerned. But I don't know all of the the the, the amazing connections that I'm going to be making and I but I know that they will be some I don't know what path is going to lead me to but I know it's going to lead me to paths of how I feel mattering and me feeling better by meeting so many amazing people out there so don't be shy with me interact with me comment with me and even if you have a mind because I, I try to go through my pages to see who out there that's following me that have stuff on the page but most often when i click on the person it's just a picture and they don't even have a you know any videos so if you have videos if you're doing this same type of thing let me know so i can follow you so i can see what you do so i can comment over there it's not all about me i want to be able to give back to i can't find your email oh okay i'm gonna um you talking about the email with the tracking number i'm gonna um I'm going to look into it. If you just recently ordered underneath that uh, David's name, if that's what you're talking about, I'll look and see um, if you have, if you're asking me to check on an order, but I don't know what other email you're talking about. I appreciate you. And thank you for spending time with us. You are so welcome. Hey, grateful. I love your username too, but let me know um, my email address. If that's what you're saying, David is salt of the earth hub at gmail.com. That's salt of the earth, P U B at gmail.com. Email, let's net email me, let's network, let's collab on live or whatever you want to do. And even we use a um use love first first. He about to show me how to play the little game, the little TikTok game. So if y'all see me playing a little TikTok game later on the night with him, y'all tap the screen so I can beat him because I'm very competitive. We we gonna just go ahead and beat him. <laughs> Even though he got more followers than me, but that don't mean nothing. You got me to be up in the room and tap on the screen and we just going to beat him. Because guess what? We going to just be being, being everything. He using love first, but we going to be everything. Sometimes we just got to use uh, love and hate. We got to use <laughs> darkness and light. We going to be whatever. He using only love. We going to manipulate the energy and we going to be everything between <laughs> that love and fear. We going to be all of those things and be his butt later on tonight. <laughs> So we got the upper hand already. We're going to be, we're going to be, hey, we're we going to be grateful. We're going to be modest. We're going to be happy. We're going to be silly. We're going to be all them things in between love and fear. But he going to just use love. Okay, we got him. We got him beat already. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm about to go. I'll talk to y'all later on tonight. Be blessed, babe. This video was from my heart to yours. Bye. Hey, Miss Being So. See you later. <laughs>